And it seems like Faker's going to be playing the Tarek. Really? Yes. He's going to play Tarek in a professional game. Okay, there it is. If it's been a while since you've watched competitive League of Legends, you might be asking yourself, what the fuck is going on right now? We're over a week into the summer split, and we've already seen some of the zaniest strategies that Pro League has seen in years. Oh, there oh, it is! Oh boy, Nunu, Nunu Karthus is coming right out away. on the blue side. They want Nunu Karthus. It's take the Karthus, Whoa, and we, we might have Tarek E against it! <laughs> We're getting it! It's happening! We're popping off in the first game! It's the first game of LCK 2018 Summer, and we're gonna get it right away. Karthus gets locked Holy crap! In. And though it's still early in the split, this huge boost in creative compositions could be exactly what Riot needs at a critical time for their game. So after seeing a handful of games with admittedly insane team comps, the League community has reacted a bit strongly. But what's the big deal? Riot has made changes before. Huge changes that have impacted the way League is played. Think of 2015's Juggernaut patch, or last year's infamous Arden Sensor meta. Everybody's just on the race to Arden Sensor. When you play that Arden Sensor support, now this is a risky composition, Cloud. Yes, They it have is. no real front line for the they side They have no any kind of front line, real or imaginary. No, None of these know, guys are tanked. Do you know what they do have, Flowers? Double on sensor. But this current meta is a way bigger deal than any of those. Simply put, these changes are coming at one of the most important moments in League of Legends history. League is an old game, a really old game. It first came out in 2009, and it's had a healthy competitive scene since season one in 2010 and 2011. And though that scene has come a long way, it's rare for people to stick with a game as long as they've stuck with League of Legends. There are some older players who have been playing the game for nearly a decade who might be starting to get bored of a game that, while not unchanging, is starting to get stale. Many of the game's older guard of content creators have started to move on to other big games. It's 2018, and the question is, where are the League videos? And yeah, they're not going to be a main thing anymore. Nice. For some, that's been epic game smash hit Fortnite. Fortnite is just the latest in a litany of games that the community has decided is going to kill League. Obviously, it's not that simple. League of Legends isn't going to disappear tomorrow because Ninja got a particularly sweet victory royale. Let's go, baby! But we've seen other games have moments like this. The biggest hits of yesteryear, from World of Warcraft to Starcraft to plenty of others, all saw declining player bases eventually, for a number of reasons. And player dissatisfaction is a big one. So it's fair to say that this period of meta unrest is coming at an important time in League of Legends history. And in North America, this chaotic patch is coming in the middle of the first season of a newly franchised league that saw millions of dollars be poured into the scene. Relegation might not be a factor anymore, but it might be hard to see a reliable return on investment when the meta is just so unpredictable. Pros and team owners have been complaining about Riot's constant changes to their game for years. In 2016, Team Solo mid owner Reginald compared a league's constantly changing format to basketball. If you look at like the NBA, right, where they go into like the NBA playoffs, it would be essentially changing like the basketball basketball's weight and changing it to like shooting a bowling ball instead of a basketball. And don't kid yourself, meta swings this huge have a serious impact on pro players. It's very scary for a lot of the pro players though because the ones that can't adapt like that yeah. or feel uncomfortable on the other champions, like your job is at stake, kind of your livelihood mm -hmm. is yeah. at stake. And if something like this lasts a long time, then maybe you actually end up having to worry about getting replaced or something like that. Just take a look at some of the most dramatic role swaps we've already seen from the pros. Huni played Yasuo in the bottom lane in Echo Fox's game against FlyQuest and Jungle versus Clutch Gaming, forcing Alltech and Dardoch to play top. Also there with Phoenix, Lyra a little too low. Huni gonna try and take him up, but the smite is good. Huni flashes, does get the kill on the stun, barely misses from Forbidden. Now gonna flick them both back out and Huni! In a game against Afrika, Faker took Darius to the bottom lane while Bang played a Lulu mid. This is what happened, is that they had to be comfortable going further flex, and that is Faker playing his first ever competitive duo bot lane game as Darius. Against Gen G, Faker played Taric mid to funnel farm into Blossom's Master Yi. He didn't even CS. Oh I boy. Guess it's gonna be a problem. Faker's gonna be stunned up here, and the red buff on Haru level two means that with no flash, Faker is not going to live. They're trying to give the kill to Haru, and he flashes in. Pro players are great at League of Legends. There's no question there. 
but they're extraordinary polished players in one role. Now, sometimes that role requires you to learn multiple types of champion. For example, top laners have had to have had experience playing both tanks and carries in their careers. But a world in which the best players need to be good at multiple roles could look very different from the world that most pro players are used to. And if this unpredictable meta sticks around, it could have a huge impact on the game. If you go through the things Faker has done this season, he's tried to play carry, he's tried to play facilitator, he's gone bot lane, he's gone mid lane, and now he's a support. They're trying it over Valdez, they don't know the right way to move forward, and none of those strategies have worked. And that's gonna do it here. Haru with the stopwatch even, saying he's gonna live, and then he dies anyway. Down goes the Nexus, two to zero, Gen G. Master Yi and Tarek does not work again. And SKT still looking for a way to win. And the meta has been unpredictable. Bruisers going bot lane, hyper farming Master Yi and Karthus, and Tarek going mid. So how did we get here? There's a few answers to that. A big part of the meta shifts came as part of a bold plan from Riot Games. They'd planned to work their way through several roles, significantly reworking each one. In patch 8.10, they drastically changed junglers and jungle experience. In 8.11, they reworked AD carry items and reduced base damage for the game's traditional marksmen. But there have been big picture changes to the game too. Recent patches have seen an increase to bounty gold for killing fed enemy champions, and a decrease to global gold for the first outer turrets. This pushes some of the gold available in a game away from traditional objectives like towers and towards kills, incentivizing players to kill fed enemy champions. Now, all these changes on their own might not have impacted the game all that much aside from a few champions rising to prominence and a couple dropping down, but put them all together and they've changed the game dramatically. Oh. Play, but look at this Loyal, he has blood well. He says we're letting it rip, boys! Golden God. Guardian goes dead and he just absolutely deletes Team Liquid! They are just being absorbed up and gone, evaporated from the map. And though some players in the community are very unhappy with the changes, others are embracing a new meta that's seen players have more freedom in draft than they've had in years. And we've seen it already. The first week of pro play has kind of yep. exploded. And uh, we've definitely had some exciting games already. I have been absolutely loving it. I think it's really cool that you can do all these different things and, and have the champions played in different ways. Even Mordekaiser, which has always been traditionally a carry, seeing Mordekaiser Shravana, whether or not it works, <laughs> but the Mordekaiser like, as the support mid, essentially, like playing a different role, more supportive role, I think it's just super cool. Riot Games says on their site's operations page that their mission is making League a global sport that lasts for generations. But for that to happen, they need to keep new players coming in. And while players are going to come and go, they're also going to need existing players to stick around if they want a large player base. One way to do that is to keep the game fresh. Basically, Riot needs new players. Whether Riot intended to make such a drastic change to the way League is played, the fact that they wanted to significantly rework roles between the spring and summer splits is a sign that Riot wants to keep older players interested and attract new ones. Maybe they went too far. Riot's already had to cancel their planned fighter update to deal with all the chaos they caused in 8.10 and 8.11, but there's no question that League feels pretty different right now. Will this be a shot in the arm for Riot's older players? Will this be a flashpoint that pushes the game into its second decade? Will it be the reason everybody leaves League in droves? There's no way to know, but these are the sort of bigger picture questions that Riot must be thinking about right now, now that they've turned their game upside down. The thing is, Riot usually changes things back to normal by now, but Riot hasn't changed anything about this crazy new meta yet. In fact, in the patch notes for 8.12, Riot says they're committed to smoothing out the edges and not disrupting this new meta they've created. It's still early in the season, and it's hard to say whether or not these strategies will stick around as people begin to solve the meta. But at least for now, we're seeing a huge wave of different and creative strategies define League of Legends. And if Riot is interested in maintaining their game's popularity, different and creative are going to be two very important words. So first off, I personally don't like the term Fiesta for having mages and bruisers and melees in the bottom lane. And we've also been calling it bot lane for about a year now. Yeah. So it's kind of like- It's preparation, we right. saw it coming. Stronger bot lane carry, I think, is this question.
Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.